Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I've created the ultimate setup guide for your RG353 PS. Like all my setup guides, I'm gonna leave links in the description to everything I talk about today, so don't worry about tracking it all down. And I highly, highly suggest that you follow the timestamps if you want, but start from the beginning, because if you skip anything, you might miss something important. So if you're setting this up for the first time, just make sure you scroll on through and watch the video as normal. Otherwise, for anybody else that wants to get to certain spots, you can just jump to a different timestamp. We're gonna be installing ArcOS on the RG353PS, which is a custom firmware, so it's different than stock and what it comes with. I find the custom firmware to be better than what the stock offers, and we'll get into the video of what the differences are and what to expect here, but there's a lot of great community support here. I have a link in my description to a Discord in case you have any trouble, but ArcOS is a really good operating system for all of these devices, and so it's the one that I've chosen for this specific device. As always, before we start, you need to have a branded quality SD card and SD card reader. Don't use the stock SD card that comes with the device. Throw it out. This also includes the ROM SD card. And if you're here before buying the device, don't buy the ROM SD card. And if you're here after, throw it out. You just made a mistake. Besides the fact that these SD cards are unbranded and low quality, meaning prone to failure and issues, the ROMs are low quality as well and have a ton of issues as well. A big one is the lack of ability to save progress, which really angers Pokemon fans. I'll be showing you how to find ROMs as well as subtly as I can. It's a touchy subject. For a quality SD card and SD card reader, it depends on if you want to do a one SD card setup or two. If you just want one SD card, the Samsung Evo 128 gig is a great option. Or if you're doing a two card setup, the same card for ROMs and a 32 gig SanDisk is a great combination. One or two cards is my personal preference. If you're price conscious, just stick with the one 128 gig. Now, the last thing you need is your ROM and BIOS library. If you just want a big list of games and then you can curate them yourself if you'd like, you can download a ROM pack called the Tiny Best Set. This set comes with a big curated list of ROMs and BIOS files. To make things easy, with a 120 gig card, you want to download the file names tinybestsetgogames.zip, tinybestsetgoexpansion64games.zip, and Tiny Best Set Go Expansion 128 Games.zip. We can get the artwork through scraping in ArcOS itself, so don't worry too much about that. You can extract all those zips to the same place, and you should have a few folders with BIOS and a bunch of ROM folders. If you want more platforms that aren't available in this package, it'll be on you to source them yourself through Google, Reddit, or other means. A small tip for those who want to use Reddit, if you think of how subreddits work and how ROMs are named, that should help you get started. Okay, so you have your SD card, SD card reader, and your ROMs and BIOS files ready to go. Let's move on. As far as software goes, the two things we need are Rufus and 7-Zip. Head to the rufus.ie website and download the portable Rufus tool. This is going to help us format our card as FAT32, especially if your card is above 32 gig, but just use Rufus to avoid issues. Head to the 7-Zip website and download the EXE that matches your Windows version, so likely the 64-bit. Let's also head to the ArcOS wiki and we're going to grab the RG353M image. There isn't currently an image made directly for the PS model, but the M image works just fine. Download it from G Drive or Megalink, and after you've downloaded it, use the 7-Zip to extract the zip. Connect your SD card to the PC using the SD card reader. Now let's format the operating system card as FAT32. That's the 32 gig card for two card people. Or if you're doing the one card method, it's your single SD card. Open up Rufus and make sure that the device listed is the SD card that you connected. Should match the drive size. 
On the right, click Select and navigate to the folder you extracted from the ArcOS zip and select the image file. Leave everything else as default and click Start. From here on out, after the image is put on the SD card, you may get pop-ups in Windows that say the card is not formatted, or errors with partitions, or something along those lines. Ignore all of that. If you format the card after all of this, you need to redo everything all over again. It's just Windows not knowing how to handle a FAT32 card. Once Rufus is done, you can safely eject the card using the taskbar, and then you want to put it into the slot labeled TF1 on your device, while it's powered off. Then, power on your device, and it's going to reboot a couple of times, but don't touch anything. Just let it do its thing, and it's going to go through a few reboots. When you see the emulation station menu, that's when you know you're good and ready. Now we need to get our ROMs and BIOS files on here. Turn off the device, and the next step depends on if you're doing the one card method or two card method. One card method can skip this next part, as I'm going to show how to get a second card working. Connect your second SD card to your PC using the SD card reader. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected, so it should match the drive size again. Now, under boot selection, change it to non-bootable. Change the label to whatever you want, I left it as 128 gig. Then, checking near the bottom, make sure file system is FAT32 or large FAT32, depending on the SD card size. Click Start, and you might get warnings about partitions, data, etc. Just go ahead and yes to all of them to get started. Should be quick, and it'll format your second SD card as FAT32. When it's done, safely eject it and insert that card into slot TF2 with the device powered off. Turn the device on, and when you get to the menu, head to the Options tab, then Advanced, then click Switch to SD2 for ROMs. When that's done, we're all set and the folder structures have been set up for the second SD card. Turn off the device. Okay, for single and dual SD card users, connect your SD card back to the PC. So the second SD card for ROMs if you're doing the SD card method, or the single one if you're doing the single method. You should see an easy ROMs partition in File Explorer. Head to that if you're doing the single card method. Otherwise, you'll just see ROM folders if this is the second SD card, labeled to whatever you set in Rufus before. So mine was 128 gig. If for whatever reason you don't see any of these partitions, open up Disk Management and assign that partition a letter. It should be pretty self-explanatory at this part, but these are all platform folders where you can put your ROMs in, as well as a BIOS folder. So what you want to do now is grab your ROMs and BIOS files from the tiny best set collection we grabbed earlier, and put them in the right folder. The folder names likely don't match for a lot of them, so you'll have to just copy the ROM files inside the tiny best set folders to the right location on the easy ROMs partition. If you get stuck and you're not sure what platform is what, check the ArcOS Wiki's emulator page and it'll show you, as well as the right file types and BIOS needed for each platform. But as somebody who did this with the actual Tiny Best Set collection, none of the file types need to be changed, it was just a matter of finding the right folders for the files. Once you've moved all that over, Safely eject and put your card back in the powered off device. 
For dual card users, you will always need the operating system card to be in slot TF1 to boot properly. And your slot 2 is your games card. Turn on the device and you should see all your games set up and ready to go. Let's get some artwork on here though. Turn on your Wi-Fi in the Options Advanced section. It'll send you back and then come back to this spot and choose Wi-Fi. Once you're done setting up your Wi-Fi, back out to the main emulation station menu and push start. Head down to Scraper. At this point, you'll want to set up an account at ScreenScraper.fr's website. And then come back here and enter those details in. The other options are personal preference. I don't want or need ratings or videos, so I'll turn that off. If you want actual box art, choose Box 2D for image source. When you're ready, click Scrape Now, and you can customize which systems you want to scrape, or just do the whole thing. I'm going to do the whole thing, so just click Start when you're ready. Another thing to show, and that's enabling retro achievements. For those unfamiliar, you can get achievements in retro games which is awesome, and so we want that feature. If you don't have an account already, head to the Retro Achievements website and make one, as we'll need your username and password. On the device, go to RetroArch from the main menu, and you'll see two RetroArch instances. We'll have to log in to both. Steps are the same. Open one, and then head to Settings, Achievements, Enable Achievements, and then enter your username and password in each field. After that, back out to the main RetroArch menu and go into Configuration and click Save Current Configuration. Then quit RetroArch and repeat these steps again for the other RetroArch instance. Speaking of RetroArch, there's a few settings that aren't on that should be in my opinion. First, Fast forward isn't mapped for some reason. So let's get to settings, input, hotkeys, and then select fast forward toggle and make it R2. Let's also set show FPS to Y. This makes it so that when we push select plus these hotkeys, it'll turn these functions on. Select is our hotkey button. Back out one menu and let's turn off Confirm Quit. This is so that you don't have to do Start plus Select twice to exit a game. Now let's back out again and jump into Saving. Right now, ArcOS is not auto-saving state on Exit, and so if you want that, enable auto-save state. In the same way, when you load a game, it's not loading the save state automatically. So enable that as well if you want it. I personally want both. Back out twice and you get back to the main RetroArch menu and then Configuration, Save Current Configuration. Quit RetroArch and then repeat all of these exact same steps for the other RetroArch version as well. If you want to change your theme, from the main menu in ArcOS, press Start, then UI Settings and you'll see a few themes here. If you want to add more, Head to the ArcOS wiki and you'll see instructions on how to do so. There's also an option under Options and Tools for Theme Master, which has a few more. For those that want to play other types of games, we also have something called Port Master. This is a bit more involved and would bloat this video quite a bit, but if you're interested in games you can port over, check out Retro Game Core's guide on the subject. I personally just have Stardew Valley loaded, but I know that you can do Shovel Knight and a few other games as well. If you want to load your games remotely, head to Options and enable Remote Services. Then, in any local network web browser, type that IP address in. 
You'll see an ArcOS landing page and the default username and password is Arc for both. And it has to be lowercase. Now you're able to upload, download, remove, and do whatever you want to the files on the ROM SD card. It's super useful for just adding games remotely to your device. And lastly, how do you update ArcOS? It's pretty easy. And since we set everything up, there actually is an update already. You go to options and then scroll down to update. Click it and it'll give you a warning about not stopping the script, so make sure you're plugged in. Click OK and then you have to actually write OK as well. Then set it down and let it update. Now just jump into some games and have fun. For the purposes of this guide and what we were doing, you should have everything set up and ready to go and all your games are good. Now the world is your oyster and so you can just play around and play some games. I'll have a full review of this device up in a week or two. I need some time to get my thoughts together. If you liked this video, check out my other videos on some similar devices that might help you make some decisions on what to buy. Don't forget to like and sub to help this channel grow and hope you all have a good one.